Hello, hello, hello. This is Nicholas, and this is a Klein bottle. <laughs> and a, a Klein bottle that was made by Cliff Stoll from Number File. Um, two of my wonderful cousins got me this Klein bottle, and obviously I have a math YouTube channel, and so I have to dive in to all the properties of this wonderful piece of topology right here. Specifically, the subset of topology that is non-orientable manifolds. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So, first of all, what is a... This is this is actually a, a 4D Klein bottle. Obviously, we're in 3D, so we're going to have a self-intersection here, but I'm going to talk about that. So, uh, how do I even get this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what does it mean? Well, before I can talk about this, I have to talk about these. <laughs> these are Mobius strips. Before I can talk about these... I have to talk about this piece of paper right here. So, let's start there. Um, Mobius strips have the unique property of, watch my hand here, let's say I start right here, <laughs> and I go along here, just tracing my hand along the Mobius loop, Mobius strip, and now you see my hand is on the back side of where I started. Now, if I keep going around, it's going to come back out, and now I'm back where I started. So, what that tells me is that this Mobius strip has one edge, right? So, if I were to get a pen, right, and I were to trace my... If I were to trace my... If I were like an ant or something like this, then what you would get is one continuous pen mark. Now, obviously, I'm just bad at drawing the pen, so it'll look very discontinuous. <laughs> But you can see I'm not moving the Mobius strip at all, right? So obviously this looks really bad. <laughs> but the gist of it is, look, I can get a pen and go around this whole Mobius loop. And so therefore this has one edge. As does this Mobius loop or Mobius strip. It's the same thing. Um, one I have just... The way I constructed these is very, really very simple. I'm not going to cut this piece of paper in half because I need it. But you just got a piece, get a piece of paper and you just cut it um, down this way. You get a long strip of paper and then you fold it once, which means it has one edge. And you're going to get this Mobius strip right here. And this Mobius strip um, kind of gives us an interesting question, right? So for example, I'm going to cut this one now, this other piece of paper here. And now, let's say we just have, you know, think this is a rectangle, just kind of for simplicity's sake, and then this is a rectangle as well. So what happens if I were to kind of sew these two together right here? Um, how many edges would the resulting shape have? Well, if I've got this rectangle right here, it's got four edges. And I've got this rectangle right here. It's also got four edges. And when I put them together, I'm going to have um, also four edges, but I'm going to lose this middle edge right here, right? It's going to become sewn in. So basically, I'm going to have one fewer, I'm going to have one less edge than uh, what I would normally start with or what I would normally have. So... If we consider the case of the Mobius loop or the Mobius strip, if we were to somehow imagine sewing these together, <laughs> which uh, you might argue is impossible because that requires four dimensions, you would actually get, this has one edge, this has one edge, they're the same thing, one I've just flipped the paper left and one I've flipped the paper right. You're going to get something with no edges. <laughs> and that's so cool, right? And so this... Klein bottle is the uh, four-dimensional shape that, or object, that has 
no edges. And so what does this mean? It means that just like how in the case of the Mobius strip, where I, if I were an ant, for example, I could walk around and around and around and I would end up back where I started. Um, this here has no edges. So what you can do to kind of see that is imagine you're like this. So imagine I'm an ant kind of walking along this Klein model right here. And so what I'm going to do, at least what I think I'm going to do, <laughs> is let's say I start right here. And obviously I can walk all around the surface of this Klein bottle. And let's say I walk, I'm walking up along the outside of this tube right here. Now I've, I've reached this wall right here, but um, I'm just going to go straight through it. And I'll uh, elaborate on this why, but this particular intersection right here, I could just go straight through. So right now I am on the outside of the inner part of the uh, Klein bottle, right? So I'm in this sort of space right here. And now I can walk along the outside of the Klein bottle up so that I'm now on the inside of the tube. I'm going through the inside of the tube now, going through. Now I'm going through the inside of the tube, coming out. And now I'm back up where I started without crossing over any edges. So this Klein bottle has no edges. And what's so cool about it is um, it's 4D. I've been saying 4D a lot. Why is it 4D? Well, you kind of uh, might be wondering, you know, why, could, why did I just say I can just kind of go right through this hole rather than like, you know, drilling through it or something along those lines. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, if we're in 3D, this Klein bottle is going to have to intersect somewhere. That's just the limitation of 3D. It's kind of like how, um, if, I, if I'm looking at this in the video, right, this video recording is, is 2D, and I'm talking about a 4D shape. <laughs> so I lose a dimension when I'm recording the video, but uh, we all know that we live in 3D. So now, if I imagine going, see right here, what you have on the video is a, is a 2D uh cross section of me and where I am in my house, you could say. And so uh, you can hopefully see kind of with the camera that this there is this hole in this Klein bottle that is like in the center of the bottle. Now, if I were to put, uh, put my hand behind the bottle, and we know that uh, I can do that because we live in three dimensions, right? We have a length, we have a width, we have a height, that sort of thing. If I put my hand behind the bottle, it looks from the two dimensional point of view of the video that I, my hand is going right through the glass, right? And coming out on the other side. And so to someone uh, living in flat land or living in 2D um, who can't perceive three dimensions, um, they would think, well, that's impossible. His hand is just going right through the glass. It's a similar idea here. In 4D, my hand would just go right through this glass but we can't perceive that because we live in three dimensions. Now, uh, the other thing that this is, is it's a manifold. And so what does that mean? It means it's locally Euclidean at every point along the Klein bottle. And so what does that mean? <laughs> that means that, well, if you think of like Euclidean geometry, right? So where uh, uh, lines are uh, straight and they don't intersect and uh, equivalently, right, the sum of the angles of a triangle always add up to 180. Uh, kind of a fun thought experiment, though. There are other non-Euclidean geometries, for example, uh, spherical geometry, where the uh, sum of the angles of a triangle can add up to 270 degrees. And how you can show that really quick, I thought I had my map. Um, say right here is where you start on the equator, right? You go straight up from the equator, to the North Pole, and this is on the surface of a sphere. Uh, well, really, it's an oblique spheroid, but we can assume the Earth is a, is, a, is a sphere. So we go straight up from the equator up to the North Pole along the curvature of the sphere. So from the equator to the to the North Pole, or the South Pole, doesn't matter which pole, just some pole. Um, then we're going to make a 90 degree turn along the curvature of the Earth, right? A 90 degree turn. We're going to go back down to the equator, right, to a, a spot somewhere uh, left of where we originally were. 
And then now we're going to walk straight along the equator back to our original spot. And so what we've just made there is a 270 degree triangle, right? We've gone straight up from the equator, that's a 90 degree angle. We've made a 90 degree turn at the North Pole, obviously a right angle. We've gone straight down to the equator again at a spot left of where we were before. And then we're walking straight along the equator again. So that's three 90 degree angles in that triangle. And that's possible because the triangle is living on the curvature of the sphere. So another interesting property uh, while we're on the topic of spheres is, uh, well, Mr. Stoll sent me this tag to go with my Klein bottle, <laughs> imported from the fourth dimension. And so you see that uh, there's a bunch of zeros everywhere. <laughs> And that's exactly right. This Klein bottle, you can fill it, well, you can fill it with water only because um, we have this three-dimensional kind of limitation that there is an uh, intersection of this 4D Klein bottle because we live in a 3D world. Um, but in reality, the Klein bottle is a, is a 4D uh, mathematical structure or kind of idea uh, similar to how whenever we draw a square on paper, we're not actually drawing a square because the lines that compose the square are one dimensional and therefore have no width. And so the pen that you're drawing the uh, square with is not actually a representation of a square. We can't actually draw a square or a circle or any uh, 2D shape on paper because the uh, lines or the arc or whatever that makes it up is one dimensional. Um, and so it's a similar thing here. Kind of let that sink in for a little bit. Every square that you've drawn is not actually square. You can't actually draw a square, <laughs> um, a true square. So it's just a figment in our imagination. And so the Klein bottle, what it, well, what it means for something to have volume, um, take for example, the sphere. The sphere is always gonna hold, uh, you know, for thinking with water here, it's always gonna hold four thirds pi r cubed uh, water in it, uh, whatever unit you wanna use there. Um, and so mainly the idea is that you have a sphere and then there's something inside of it and there's a clear boundary, right? Between the outside and the inside of the sphere. This looks like I'm drawing a heart now, but it's really, I'm trying to do a sphere. <laughs> and so the sphere separates the universe from uh, an outside part, right? Everything else. And then an inside part, what's inside the sphere, the four thirds pi r cubed. And so it, um, holds a definite volume absolutely now the klein bottle uh does not separate the universe into two distinct parts and so therefore it doesn't have any mathematical volume right because it has this hole right here and then this really uh it, this intersection would not be happening here in four dimensions and so because of that uh, you would not be able to actually have two distinct regions in the universe where the Klein bottle separates the two. Now, of course, since we're living in three dimensions, though, <laughs> we can actually fill our volumeless Klein bottle with water <laughs> because of this intersection right here. And so what you can actually do, I'm not going to do it yet, I, because uh, it's, it's going to, it, it's very hard to get out, but, um, you can, if you get your Klein bottle and you put it in a, in a bucket full of water that is taller than the Klein bottle itself and you kind of dunk it in and then you keep turning it back and forth, you'll get some air bubbles that will pop out. And so when air bubbles pop out, um, conservation of, uh, <laughs> of something <laughs> will tell you that uh, if the air bubble is going out, then the water must be going in. Um, and so very slowly you can fill up your, your, your Klein bottle and you can get water out of it too. Uh, you would kind of have to tilt it again, but it's very hard to get out because um, what's called a vapor lock. So there's not much air circulation that gets through to here. And so the air is trying to get in while the water is trying to get out. And so the result is a very, very slow water flow. It would take you hours to empty the water out of your volumeless Klein bottle. And another example that might um, surprise you here is um, a measuring cup. Um, so now a measuring cup 
is something that we always turn to um, when we're doing uh, cooking and all these things, but you know, you don't want to really get <laughs> a topologist near your cookbook because they will, um, <laughs> they'll mess with it. So the measuring cup actually does not have any volume either mathematically. It can hold volume, but it does not, right? There's a big hole where you pour however much water or whatever it is you're going to pour in there. And so it doesn't separate the universe into two different parts. And uh, a little more rigorously, we can actually say that a uh, measuring cup is what we call homeomorphic to a disc. So in other words, a circle, but all the area inside of the circle is shaded in as well. And basically what you can do here is, I'll, be, I'll get it real quick. You can get your measuring cup and what you can do is you can, a homeomorphism from one uh, shape or something to another means that you can, uh, there exists some continuously deforming function so that uh, it turns the one shape into the other. That's where the uh, joke about the topologist not being able to tell the difference between a um, coffee mug and a torus or a donut uh, comes into play. So you can actually kind of get this and then you can, if I turn the, you can kind of squish it down. You can imagine squishing it down like this and welding it down so that all of this top part, if this is a, if this is a perfect circle right here, this bottom part, you can imagine squishing it down so that the rest of it comes down along with this circle right here. And then it just becomes a disc after some finite squishing or stretching or welding down or things like that. And those are just standard rules of topology. And so you can do the same thing with a coffee mug. You can actually, there it's, it's homeomorphic to a donut, a torus. And that's where the joke with topologists not being able to get the difference between a coffee mug and a donut comes in. And another thing about this Klein bottle that I mentioned is it's um, a manifold. And so a manifold is something that's locally Euclidean at every point along the Klein bottle. And locally Euclidean, um, so I gave the example of the triangle, for example, where in Euclidean space, um, the some of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees or lines are, uh, if they're parallel, they never intersect, right? That's only true in like Euclidean geometry. So um, just like, uh, Euclidean geometry, if it's locally Euclidean, it means it behaves in the, uh, standard way that you would expect it really. Uh, if we're, you know, from a, from a high schooler's point of view, you've only been exposed to Euclidean geometry before. And so that's where planes are flat, uh, you know, lines are straight. Um, so if I were to zoom in far enough, if I, if I were to say, if I were to pick this point right here on the Klein bottle, this point, uh, let me do it more in front of you. This point right here on the Klein bottle. And I were to zoom in far enough into this Klein bottle. And let's say I were to consider a plane tangent to the point on this Klein bottle right here. Then what would happen is as I zoomed in farther and farther and farther into the Klein bottle centered at that point, then the plane that is tangent to the point on the Klein bottle would uh, approach the zoomed in surface of the Klein bottle itself. And that is very, in a very loose sense, what we mean by locally Euclidean at every point. Um, so these are some interesting properties about the Klein bottle. One other thing is that it's a non-orientable manifold. Um, and so what that means is if it's non-orientable, it doesn't have a orientation. Um, so for example, a, a sphere, I go back to the sphere. The sphere definitely has an orientation, right? You have a specified, how we define orientation to begin with is with a normal vector. So we can say that, you know, if you were to imagine the boundary of the sphere, right? Cause the sphere does have a, a clear boundary. Then you could have a normal vector pointing away from the boundary at a specified point and a normal vector or away from the sphere at a specified point, and then that opposite normal vector pointing down into the sphere, right? And so what that tells you 
is that you could assign sort of uh, clockwise and counterclockwise directions to the sphere. And that's uh, the way that we would usually go about defining orientability. Um, another way you could kind of think about it loosely is that if you were to walk along the boundary of the sphere, and this is kind of how they do it in multivariable calculus, if you were to walk along the boundary of the sphere, uh, we talk about positive and negatively oriented surfaces. So if it's positively oriented, the interior of the surface is going to lie on your left. And so you can tell that a sphere is positively oriented in that way. You walk along the boundary. If you look on your left, the sphere, the inside of the sphere will be there. Um, so a Klein bottle though, right? It's always changing as you walk along it, right? It doesn't even really have a all that well-defined boundary. And so therefore it's it's not orientable in the usual sense that like a, a sphere is or things like that. And this is just so cool. Um, and you don't have to worry about any dust settling on it, any like um, Cantor dust or anything like that because it's just gonna have measure zero just like uh, um, any finite collection of, <laughs> of points. <laughs> or an infinite collection that is spaced out or something like this. So you don't have to worry about dust. And uh, it's just such a cool shape. Topology is just, it's just such a cool subject. Anyway, I hope you found this video somewhat fun. And I found it a good video too, because I got to procrastinate on my English, my CAS, and probably something else. And thank you so much <laughs> for buying this. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> Cousin Cindy and Kyle, <laughs> this is, it even, ha it even came with a sticker that has all of the properties of the Klein bottle on it, right? Uh, so zero volume, uh, it's got an Euler characteristic of about one. Um, <laughs> it's just so funny. Anyway, I think with that, we're done.